Hey, what's up guys? Spencer Rhodes here, and this is my review for The Walking Dead Season 10, Episode 1. So, this was a pretty good episode. It didn't, you know, it didn't blow me away or anything. It wasn't like, holy crap, this is the best episode ever. Um, it was pretty good. It, it had a lot of good moments. It... I think I think there's just sort of a, a general problem with The Walking Dead where it, at the end of the day I think we all kind of miss Rick. I mean, let's be honest. I think that's one of the problems is that the main lead, you know, Rick, Andrew Lincoln, the guy that carried the show through the first nine seasons or eight and a half seasons is gone and you know he's not dead but he's not in the show at all anymore at least in season nine he was in it for a little bit this is the first season where we're going into it without any Rick Grimes any Andrew Lincoln and Michonne's about to leave and Maggie's been gone for a while and Carl's dead and and, and Morgan's God knows what it, I think it, it, you kind of feel a bit of a of an absence of some of these these main characters, particularly Rick, and I, I, th I think that kind of hurts the show in a way where it can't really fix it. Angela Kane can't really fix the fact that Rick is gone. She can't fix the fact that Carl's dead, or that I, I don't even like Carl, but she can't fix the fact that you know Morgan's on Fear the Walking Dead, or Mich Maggie and Michonne are leaving and stuff like that. That's really not her fault. I do believe that she's doing her absolute best with what she does have, and I think you can you can tell that in, in this season, or in this first episode. I think it was a, a pretty good episode. It wasn't a mind-blowing episode, but I would much, much rather it be a good episode than it being like a, an average or bad episode. This was a good episode. This was a, a fairly solid season premiere. It's not on the same level as the premiere of season five or season six, or maybe even season four and season seven, but it was a good enough premiere. I think there's a lot of potential for things to get better from this episode. You know, I, th I think with, and I hate to bring it up, but you know, Fear the Walking Dead season five, there was that first episode and it wasn't that good, and it, but I think a lot of us were thinking, well, maybe it's just the setup. Maybe it's just to, to build things up from here and it's just set up in the first episode. And then the rest of season five basically sucked. <laughs> um, but I think with The Walking Dead season 10, the first episode could very well be that. It could very well be, okay, there's a lot of setup. There's a lot of establishing characters and how they've been, been handling the the heads on spikes and the border. And they're eventually going to fight the Whisperers, but they're waiting a little while because they want to train and be ready. And there's all these different conflicts and and characters are are handling things in completely different ways individually and i think you had to you have to establish that i think the you know the next few episodes definitely have potential to be a lot crazier and a lot more interesting but you have to you have to establish the groundwork you know the characters the the dynamics how they're dealing with the heads on spikes because a lot of characters died on the heads on spikes you know 10 characters were killed off when the heads on spikes happened and you know, there's all these different characters, and they're all dealing with it in, in different ways. So I think I think that makes sense to sort of establish that and then go from there. Because there's also been a few months between season 9 and 10. R Rosita has already had her baby. I don't even remember if she was... Was she, like, barely even showing at the end of season 9? I think she had... If I remember correctly, she just had, like, a little bump. And then in season 10, she's already had the baby, so... There might be like a six month, seven month time jump. Someone let me know the the time jump between the season nine finale and the ten premiere because I'm not sure. Uh, I can probably find that out if I if I search the internet, but I'm guessing off the top of my head it's been like six, seven months because I don't remember Rosita having a big belly at the end of season nine, and then season ten she's had the baby, and the baby seems like the baby might be a few months old. So I don't know how long how much time has passed between seasons, but yeah, and I really liked Daryl and Carol's scenes. I really liked their their friendship. You know, I've I've always loved their chemistry. Everyone's wanting them to to fuck and get together, and it's not going to happen. They're not like that. They're they're like friends, you know. Um, but I get it. I get why people want Daryl and Carol to have a romance, but 
it's not going to happen. It's just not. I mean, they, they're just friends. I think they, their, their relationship, their dynamic is a very beautiful one. Plus the fact that, you know, they're the only two season one characters. And they've pretty much had a dynamic, an evolving dynamic that has been a decade long at this point. So... I really love Daryl and Carol. I love their friendship. I don't need them to have sex. I don't need them to kiss to prove that they care about each other. I like their friendship the way it is. So I, I love their scenes. I love that they gave Carol a little bit of Comic Michonne's storyline because for those of you that don't know, in the comics, it's Michonne who is the one who goes off to sea and, and rides boats and and she literally comes back and says that same dialogue that Carol says about how you work until you you can't your back breaks and you can't work anymore and you sleep like you've never slept before. I think that's exactly what Carol says and that's exactly what Michonne says in the comics. So they're definitely giving Carol a little bit of comic Michonne storyline which they've done that before because you know she had comic Carol's um, no I'm sorry uh, she, Carol had comic Michonne's romance with Ezekiel so they're definitely g giving bits and pieces of comic Michonne to Carol Maybe that's because Michonne's about to leave, so I, I don't know. It seems like they're giving little bits and pieces of comic Michonne to Carol, and they're giving little, be little bits and pieces of comic Rick to Aaron. Now, Aaron was pretty interesting in this episode. I really enjoyed Aaron's scenes with Michonne about how, are, you know, are we the, the bad guys in someone else's story? And, and Aaron's just, he's, he's really in a dark place right now. He's like, you know, I've, I've been the nice guy my whole life. And then Eric died, and then Jesus died, and I'm tired of being the nice guy. And Michonne's like, you don't have to be nice. Being nice never got me anywhere, but be smart. You know, I, I like I like the dynamic between Michonne and Aaron. Man, it just really sucks that Michonne is leaving this season. I, I think she was one of the she was one of the best characters in this episode, and and I feel like this show really needs her. It really needs her 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 just her intelligence and her wit and and just her. How she's always able to make the, the the good decisions, even when she's lost really important things. I just I hate that we're losing Michonne. I'm tired of losing main characters. I mean, if I was on The Walking Dead, I would stay. I would stay for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll retire after that. I'm sure I'd have money, and then I get to watch myself be like an action figure guy on the DVDs. Like hell yeah! Why are all these people leaving after six seasons, seven seasons? There are people out there who have jobs that they have to work for 50, 60 years of their life. But oh, poor you! You can't handle six seasons of a show. You have to leave, and then your character gets fucked over. Okay, okay. I'm just frustrated because I don't want Michonne to leave. I don't think anyone wants Michonne to leave. We've already lost Rick. We've already lost Maggie. Maggie's coming back apparently in in this season. Apparently, uh, I'm guessing the back half or maybe towards the end of the first half. I don't know, but it's been confirmed that Maggie is going to be returning in season ten. I will make another video about that, but that's good. I mean, it's about time we've lost enough main characters because the actors want to leave, haven't we? So it's good that we're at least getting Maggie back, but. Yeah, this was a pretty good episode. I I think uh, my favorite part was probably the opening minutes. Just seeing that army of people practicing for, for I guess, fighting the whispers. Just seeing the army practicing and the music and and how it showed the walker in the in the in the water. Then Judith kills it, and Alden with the spear that was badass. And also in this episode we are introduced to Dante and it seems like he's going to be a little different from the comics. Um, in the comics um, he was this like soldier type guy that was always flirting with Maggie and it seems, it seems like in the show he's going to be a doctor or a medic or something so I don't know I mean Maggie is coming back so maybe yeah, maybe they'll, they'll do the comic romance but I don't know I'm, I'm kinda of 50-50 on that. They might have Dante and Maggie get together or they might just have Maggie stay single. I don't know. In the, in the comics, she was there's she was there's a few a few years where she was like, you know, I love Glenn. I don't want to be with another man. You know, he's dead, but I still love him. And in the show, I don't know if, but in the comics, she eventually hooks up with Dante. But it's kind of implied that it wasn't serious. Like they just slept together and and were just kind of hooked up for a little while. And we don't even know what happens to Dante at the end of the comics. They don't tell us. <laughs> but 
in the show, I don't know if they're going to go that route. I don't know if they're going to give Maggie another love interest. I mean, maybe they do. That maybe they do. I don't know. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, just, I know there's still a lot of of television television Glenn fans out there. I think with Comic Glenn it was easier because let's face it, no one cared about Comic Glenn as much as TV Glenn. Um, at least most people didn't. You know, TV Glenn was just a much bigger deal. And I'm sure there's some people that don't want to see Maggie moving on from Glenn in the TV show, but it's season 10, maybe she's going to, I don't know, we'll just have to wait and see. But, yeah, plus, in the, in the, in the timeline of the show, it's been like, what, 8 years, 6 years, 7 years since Glenn died, so maybe it's time for Maggie to move on. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what they're going to do with Maggie and Dante. Um, but maybe Dante is just going to be a completely different character and they don't have their romance, but we'll just have to wait and see. But this was a pretty good episode. I, I really enjoyed it. Um, I, I liked a lot of Eugene's parts. I thought Eugene was funny when th they had to put out that fire and Eugene was looking at the, the satellite that crashed and and um, he was like, give me 20 minutes, and Michonne's like, no, you get no minutes, and Eugene was like, okay, just give me 10 minutes, we could get valuable technology out of that, out of this, and then, and Michonne's like, okay, fine, five minutes, and Eugene just like, cuts my 10 minutes in half, or, <laughs> I thought that was funny, <laughs> that's definitely something Eugene would say, so I, I like a lot of his bit, a lot of his bits and his, his parts, and Rosita breastfeeding the baby, and Eugene's trying to look at her boob, but she's getting mad. I thought that was funny. Um, but, yeah, and then this episode ends with, apparently, um, Alpha finding out that they're, they've crossed the border, because I think Daryl and Carol have crossed the border, and they've been crossing the border a few times, but they haven't, they have, they haven't gotten caught by the Whispers. And the deal with the Whispers is, if you cross our border, you know, it's war, we'll kill you with our, our gigantic horde of walkers. So they've been careful about not crossing the border, but I think at the end of the episode, Daryl and Carol crossed the border, and then Carol saw Alpha, and then Alpha looked at Carol. And at first I thought this was like a hallucination of Carol's, and then I was like, oh crap. It's not a hallucination. Damn, this ending, holy crap, this ending! I mean, the ending was pretty good. Just out of nowhere, we see Alpha, and that's, I'm guessing that's it. You know, they've crossed the border, they got caught, so. Plus, I kind of like that it's Carol and Alpha. You know, I really hope that they they really do something with, I mean, I'm not, my, you don't have to have Carol kill Alpha to complete my life. Um, I get it if it's not her, but I would at least, if Carol doesn't kill Alpha, fine, but I would at least like Carol and Alpha, you know, their, their dynamic, you know, I'm sure they want to, they basically want to kill each other. Alpha doesn't know who Carol is, but Carol knows who Alpha is, she's the bitch that killed her son, so I would like to see at least a lot of material done between those two characters, if not Carol kills Alpha. I would at least like them to do something with those two characters. You know, in the comics, someone else kills Alpha. They might have a, a completely different main character kill Alpha in the show that's neither that character or Carol. I don't, I don't know, but, but um, I hope that they at least have some material with Carol and Alpha. I at least want there to be some material between those two characters. You know, she doesn't have to kill her, but I would at least like there to be some material. But yeah, overall, I enjoyed this episode. I thought it was a pretty good episode. Um, not the best season premiere in the world, but not a bad episode, not a bad season premiere. And I enjoyed it. I thought it was pretty good, pretty well made. So yeah, that's pretty much my review. I'd say it's maybe an 8 out of 10, something like that. I don't usually do ratings, but overall, I enjoyed this episode. I thought it was pretty good. But yeah, I'm excited for the rest of the season. I'm excited for... You know, the Whisper of War, seeing who dies, who lives, how Michonne leaves, and stuff like that. But, yeah. That's pretty much my review. I can't think of anything else to say. So, with all that said, don't be shy. Hit that like and subscribe. I'm not going anywhere. 
I make one to two Walking Dead videos per day, so please hit that subscribe button. Right now we are at 617 subscribers. My goal is to try to get to 700 in the next few months. So just remember, every subscriber counts, every bit of support matters, and is very, very appreciated. Hopefully we can get to that goal of 700. Anyway, with all that said, I'm Spencer Rhodes, and I will see you guys later. Bye!